Welcome back to the No Bullshit Guide to Java Spring Boot, Part 5. Today we cover search. So far, we have only returned all of the products in the database, or just one product by its ID. We want to add functionality to search with a keyword. We do this using a query string parameter. We can add an extra key value pair at the end of an HTTP request URL. So at the end of the URL, we include question mark, key equals value. So for example, slash search would be the URL, question mark name is the key, and the value is Samsung. So in this case, we would be searching for Samsung. We get the keyword on the controller in the URL. We then pass it to the service class, and then we need to pass it to a new method which we need to write, and that lives on the repository. We're going to cover two ways to write repository methods. The first way is using Spring Data JPA. So basically, we write a method in plain English, and Spring Boot interprets it and generates the SQL query for you, but you have to write it in a specific way. So for example, find by name containing. To get this to work, the property has to match a column in your SQL table. So find by name, there has to be a column of name in your SQL table. So here are five examples of Spring Data JPA methods. Find by name containing, find by description containing, find by name containing and category. We don't have a category on our product entity yet. This is just an example. Find by price between two values. Find by category, and then you can order by price ascending. So Spring Data JPA is very powerful. You can do a lot of things with it. If you want to generate your own query, this is where you ask ChatGPT or read the documentation. It's very easy to understand and should only take you a few minutes. Okay, let's get started. Let's start by creating a new service named search product service. Annotate it with at service. And remember, we implemented our own interface. So implements query, angle brackets string, and it's going to return a list of product DTO. And this is the advantage of doing this. I click implement method, and it automatically generates the outline of my method for me. Go ahead and define your product repository and then generate your constructor. Next up, make your way over to your product repository. And to use Spring Data JPA, it's as simple as saying, return a list of product, find by name containing, and we pass in our string of name. And if you did it correctly, that's all you have to do. Go back over to your service class, and let's call this method. Return response entity dot OK. And we pass in product repository dot find by name containing and we pass in name. This does return a list of product, and of course we want to return a list of product DTOs, so let's stream through them. Dot map, product DTO new, and we collect it to a list. We did this in a previous video. Next up, make your way over to the controller, and let's expose a new endpoint. It will be a get mapping. We'll say slash product slash search. It will return a response entity with a list of product DTOs. And we'll name it search product by name. Now this is different. We do need to include at request param when we pass in the string name. It's going to go up into the URL and grab that. Next, we need to inject our service class. So private final search product service, pass it into your constructor, and then set it. Now we can call it. So we're going to return search product service dot execute, and we pass in the name. Before I get started, I'm going to make my way over to MySQL Workbench and just see what's in here. So select star from product returns all of the products in the table. And you can see I have a Samsung, a Sony, and an Apple product. Then make your way over to Postman, and I created a new request. It is a get request, slash product, slash search, and then question mark name is equal to, and in this case, I said Sony. 
Postman also allows you to manage the key value pairs down here with a check mark. If I uncheck it, you can see it was removed from the URL. If I type in nothing, it just returns everything. So that's an important thing to note. If I type in something that doesn't exist, I get an empty list. This is also very important. It doesn't say product not found because it just returns an empty list and this is correct. If I don't include the query string parameter, I get Java Spring Boot's default error response with a message of required parameter name is not present. This is why people like to use the default Spring Boot error handling because if we've already set up the UI to handle this type of response, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to create a new exception. It was automatically done for me. There is another way to write repository methods using a custom query. In this case, we would use the at query annotation. So if your query is too complex for Spring Data JPA, you can write your own. So if you look at the bottom, you write a method just like you would before, but then you annotate it with at query, and then you pass in your query. This query is written in JPQL, or Java Persistence Query Language. It is very similar to SQL, but it is database agnostic. So JPQL gets translated to a query that works with your database. So if you're using MySQL, it converts it to a MySQL query. One thing to note is that you can see at param passed into the method, and the param keyword has to match up exactly with keyword in the query annotation. So make your way back over to the repository, and this time we'll implement a custom query. We say at query, and then for now, just paste this in. Select p from product p, where p.name is like the keyword, or p.description is like the keyword. It returns a list of product, find by name or description containing. Passed into the method, we say at param keyword, and then a string name. Go back to your service class, and instead call product repository dot find by name or description containing, and pass in the name. Make your way back over to Postman, and you can test it out. One last thing to note that we won't cover is you can create a custom native query. So instead of using JPQL, which gets translated to MySQL, you can directly write a MySQL query. In your query annotation, you would have to pass in native query is equal to true, but this is no longer database agnostic. So if you switch out your database to Postgres, this will not work. This is generally not recommended. This is a last resort if you can't get anything else working. Okay, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.